Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's Joyce L. Sapon again and today the topic is it's going to be a very detailed one and it's going to be very concise and straight to the point. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things because I've got a couple of people who have been in my messages asking me um, if I'm in the UK, what's the point of going to America or planning to go to America and what um, they are both in developed countries why am I going to America if I'm here and I'm comfortable and I try to explain to them but they don't seem to get it so in a video I'm just going to um, explain into details the reasons and um, what I considered the comparisons of those two countries to help you understand why I made that decision and I know for sure by the end of this video a lot of people are going to take um, some
alcoholic fans if you have a dependent the dependent should not be a doctor or a dentist because they are not allowed to switch over to become like to practice hmm. and I think one one thing is that if you have children and they go to school like you have to pay for stuff like their food um, you can't benefit from certain things so what vi the visa or the working permits they give you in UK to work is very very restricted and one thing is that you have to be on that visa for three years <laughs> and after the three years you would renew it you will renew it and then give you like two years so you would be here let's say a total of five years before you are eligible for an indefinite leave to remain which in this case is what in America they call the green card once you are eligible for that it doesn't even necessarily mean you're gonna get it when you apply so you can still apply and you are refused so you go back onto your visa so that is it with the UK so uh, well for whoever um, is interested, I'm not I'm not going to be um, biased because I really I'm going to just state with a type of um, visa they give you in UK to practice nursing. One of the restrictions is that you are not allowed to do anything aside nursing. So let's say you have um, a talent or you are able to do um, something else aside nursing so you would want to do that alongside you are not allowed the visa you are on does not allow you to do that so even if you're going to do anything extra or whatever skill you have in you want to do it as a part-time because you it, it's, it's a it's a natural skill and you want to explore in that area you could have just done some extra hours there to get you some money you are not the visa does not allow you so you have i think you have to get your indefinite leave to remain to be able to do that okay and let's look at the kind of working permits they give you in, in america or in the u.s to work so in the u.s on entry you are given an hb3 visa so before the visa or the vignettes they put in your in your passport is an hb3 visa and when you get there like in about seven days you get your green card like you get your, your green card like your residence permit and that is for 10 years who doesn't want this who doesn't want this and that is for 10 years and if you have a dependent like your husband your 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 wife coming with you the person also gets the same thing and they are allowed to do their stuff without restrictions without restrictions when we talk about the land of opportunities yes like they make everything possible and available for you yeah so that's the little thing I can tell you when it comes to the working permits they give you in both countries so we're gonna vote huh. and in this case i am gonna vote for america Ooh. i'm sorry uk sorry you're losing this i'm sure somebody is wondering or saying she's not in america so why why is she doing a video on it to tell us the differences even though she's not there yes i'm not there but i did all these researches and considered all these things before making that decision so I'm here to tell somebody who is also struggling to do the research who is struggling to get the right information to also get to know and decide so that when I finally get to the States I'll do an update on whether all these things that all these pointers I heard whether they are true the next point I will talk about is the healthcare so in the uk everybody popularly know that um healthcare system in the uk is free yes it is but it's free for for the british and the citizens so initially when we were coming to um uk we used to pay health surcharge so it wasn't free for us because we weren't um, entitled to any public fund so you are coming to work in a hospital but you have to pay 
So I remember um, my hospital that time, because it was my hospital that paid everything, and they paid about 3500 for a health surcharge. So it was just until recently when COVID started that they made certain changes that to say thank you to all the international nurses and um, the efforts we've put into helping the NHS, they're going to thank us by taking the health surcharge away. So come to think of it, we that uh, we came like three years ago, four years ago, we actually pay for our healthcare. It was paid for just because the, um, it's just recently when everything changed, that is when um, everything is being made free. So it still comes back to the type of vehicle. And with that being said, we don't know if they're going to change things or not because COVID is nearly over. So they are trying to bring things back into how they were before. Things like we were allowed to work over 20 hours, um, extra shifts in a week, but now they've taken it back that we can't do over 20 hours. So things are coming back into how they were before COVID. So they might have to go back into paying for the health surcharge. So which means that Yes, the healthcare in UK might be free for people, everybody, might be free, but it's not for everybody. It's for the British and the citizens in this country. And we, the international nurses, we will be allowed to pay. And then you have to pay before you come in this country. And you pay that when you're going for your visa, which is the health surcharge. So if you're going for, if you're going to get your visa and then you have to pay health surcharge, remember, it means that they've put it back on and then it's gone back to what pre-COVID um, used to be and you are paying for your own healthcare so that's it with the UK healthcare system and with the America healthcare system or the US healthcare system um, it's not free so you have to have a health insurance uh, that you pay into for when it comes <laughs> and I've heard some strange stories where people went to um, the hospital some state and they were billed like twenty thousand dollars for having a child and those things yeah so that is also there that's how the u.s system is like because most of the hospitals or i'll say all they are all private or co-owned with the government so they can't really um make it free 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 so yeah that's the difference when it comes to the healthcare system so if you are wondering um when you come to somebody's country and you get ill what are you, what you're going to do and yeah i mean this is um, what it is for the two countries hmm let's vote what do you think i'm going to vote for in this um in this point i I'm gonna give it to UK. So I'm gonna vote yes, yes, yes when it comes to the healthcare system for UK. I mean, both of them got their downside where you go, um, the quality of care given and everything. They've all got their downsides, but I'm gonna go for UK in this one. The next one I'm going to talk about will be housing. So when I talk about with housing, I mean renting, I mean, um, getting a mortgage so that's um, literally like I mean basically what I mean UK um, as an international nurse when you come and um, you are given a place to live for I think for three months by the um, the agency or the hospital or the trust that brought you generally I mean everybody knows this the houses in UK are very small ah you can see um, somebody's hall and there's literally like a kitchen back home in your the size of somebody somebody's um, lounge or their hall living area is like a kitchen back home like in, in Ghana so yeah the rooms are relatively small by all standards when you compare it to whatever which country like they are very very tiny and um when i remember i read a story where i think it was in manchester where some farmers built a house and they were taken to court because their houses that they built were way bigger than the actual um, or the required council um, 
house size and I'm like seriously somebody build their house and you you've been sued because your house is too big well that's the UK that's the UK so when it comes to mods gauges yes international nurses um, are allowed to go for mortgage but i think you have to be here for like three years but even with two years with proper solicitor you should be able I love my intestines. I don't know if I sound weird, but I love to have intestines. And in the UK, you can't find intestines anywhere. One time I went to the abattoir thinking, oh, they, they, they're gonna sell to me like cool life. They said, no, it's not allowed and they're not going to sell to me. I was so hungry for intestines. I mean, <laughs> but you're not allowed to so apparently they had issues where there was an outbreak um, of some a disease and they traced it down to it coming from the guts of the animals like the cows so 
people are not allowed to have the intestines at all in the UK. So when you go to them abattoirs and them places, they bin it. The only thing that they have is the tripe, what we call the, the towel. So it's the tripe and I think the liver is what you're going to get, but the intestines. Guys, I love my TZ. How can you do or enjoy your TZ without intestines, huh? Huh? Since we are talking about food, let me just tell you um, about um, our, our sponsor for this video. So this video is proudly sponsored by RJ's Cuisine. And if you are in Manchester, guys, please contact them. She is very good. In fact, I love her TZ, I love her Wache, I love her Banku and Tilapia. I don't even know where she gets her, that size of Tilapia from. Ah, this girl is dangerous and she makes some very nice african dishes and if you're nigerian and you are in manchester um she can also make some nigerian dishes that are very good she does like some very nice egusi egusi soup or soup. so contact them get on instagram you'll find their details so their instagram handle is rj.s underscore cuisine and oh my god you are gonna love it Thank you for sponsoring this video, RJ Cuisine. We say thank you. So back to our video. Um, let's talk about food in America. Okay, so with the food and in the States, most of them are also imported. So um, it's also a little bit higher and when it comes to pricing the prices are quite high when it comes to the african food that you need to purchase and you are you will be able to go to an animal farm select the type of animal you want like whether it go to sheep or a cow and they slaughter it for you to your preference and you come home with the whole thing <laughs> the whole including the intestines my favorite part so I remember um, my brother went to the farm because my, my brother is in the States and he went to the farm to get a goat. So after everything, somebody else from another um, race also came and um, bought a, a goat, I think. And the person wanted the intestine, like the whole gut discarded. And my brother was like, oh, why, why are you discarding it and he was like oh we don't take it in, in our country we don't take it and he said can i have it he said oh yeah, yeah, yeah. so they came home with an extra and got like extra intestines free of charge ah i would love it so yeah so that's the little thing when it comes to food like you can go to the farm select everything that you want buy it all fresh but when it comes to the uk you hardly get that opportunity even to the when you go to the abattoir, the, the, the animals are already slaughtered, um, um, de-skinned and you can't really get it as we, we enjoy it at home, do you get it? But America or USA will give you that feel. Mm. Do you get my point? Right, so, hmm. let's vote. This is a little bit tight. But considering the fact that I can't get intestines in UK, this one is a bit hard, but I would say it's a draw. The next thing we're going to talk about is the weather. Hmm. So in the UK, we have four seasons. So we have the summer, winter, spring and autumn. And the thing is, in the UK, it's generally cold, even though it's summer, but it's still a bit chilly so you can have like one week or three days of proper sun where the sun is out the temperature is like 40 degrees celsius is hot but even with that my darling you still can't bath with it you can't have a cold shower you are going to freeze because it's you, you still have that little chill in there you, you still feel a bit chilly i don't know if you get it, me and um one thing about the uk is that um the weather cuts across like if we are experiencing the summer it's for the whole of uk we are all experiencing summer whatever season we are in we are all experiencing it so that is one thing about it with the usa they also have four seasons when it comes to the weather 
but you have options so it's not all of them that are uh, experience the seasons so places like california nevada they are very warm naturally like they come like that very warm so you have options so if you're somebody who don't want the extreme cold you have options to choose that oh i'm going to stay with this i'm going to go to this area that is very warm and if you want places that are very cold and snowy you could also get to choose to go to those states and another thing is that with their seasons are very definitive so if it's a summer proper complete summer continuous very nice if it's winter we are in winter beautiful snow everywhere so that is one thing um when it comes to um the us that it's very good you have the options to choose and you get it very definitive and you get to i mean enjoy it to the fullest so with the weather i would say would when if i'm to vote or to choose <laughs> i'm gonna go with the usa on to the next one um we will talk about the nursing profession because since i'm a nurse and that's what i know or that's the field i know more um i can talk more about it but the others would be general for other people in other professions but with a nursing profession itself what i find in the uk is that it's more of a degree like a general basic degree so for instance i know of a lady who who did um, a degree in i think social work as a first degree and she went back to the university to do a second degree in nursing and she was made to start from second year in nursing because she's done um, sociology like first degree i mean how has that got what what link does it have nursing is a profession and i think whoever is coming into it should be made to start because it's a, it's a skill you're going to learn it's a profession you have to know a lot of things so imagine you coming from your country you've been made to study into details anatomy physiology all those biochemistry those things that we we studied and somebody is here just goes to nursing school for two years to come and be on the same level with you because they've had a first degree in um in something else so i would say um, they don't really consider the nursing profession as a skilled profession but they find it as anything that you can study and do like anybody can do it but in the in the in usa darling they treat nursing as a profession like even their exam is difficult you have to do like a proper nclex exam to get the license and that nclex is a, anybody who is practicing or looking into it knows it's not a joke at all like it's 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 something that you you do like it's, it's a whole thing they treat it as a profession on itself you cannot go um, and start your degree unless your degree was in let's say one of the sciences um that's related to health or related to basic um, anatomy and physiology that's when maybe you will be allowed to start from uh, like a sick angle or something even some of the nurses i know in america who went to who finished nursing school and had to go to america to start like some of them even had to go back to second year just to grasp some some stuff so yeah they treat us as like a profession a proper profession so with this when I, if i'm asked to vote or if i'm to choose i'm say i will say i'll go with the usa because they treat the profession as it is and even in practice like you could clearly see the difference when when we are put to work like you could clearly see that those are in those nurses in america are very knowledgeable they're very equipped like you can put a doctor elsewhere and they're going to work deliver care and sometimes what, what the doctors come to even do is just to prescribe the next topic or the next the next point i'm going to talk about will be the schooling i mean not schooling as in for as the nurses but schooling as a if you have children and they're supposed to go to school like that 
in the UK, I think up to um, 16 years old, you get to go to free, um, school for free. And um, I, again, um, it is not entirely free, free for with the international nurses coming. So I think the education itself is free, but other stuff um, where you have to pay for like the care, the food, those things you would pay for it in UK. With USA, education is equally free um, for your kids when you go. I don't know if um, they pay for the food and stuff, but I mean, like everywhere, they have the private schools. If you want a private school for your child, you have that to do, which you are going to pay. But the public schools are basically free. Yeah. So in this one, I am going to say it's also a draw. It's also a draw. Yeah. So they are both good when it comes to the schooling system. Now on to the moment everybody has been waited for the downside of being in <laughs> the downside when it comes to both countries <sighs> so with the UK like I'm going to try and be very very neutral like I'm gonna take myself out of it and tell you what I've seen read and heard but I'm going to talk about the natural disaster when it comes to the UK since I've been here, which is like about three to four years now, the only natural disaster I've heard about is sometimes hurricanes. That is the only thing. Oh, hurricane Ivy, hurricane what what that we, we hear about. Um, what again? Yeah, it rains in the UK, but not that bad to flood. Um, so relatively um natural disasters are very on the low when it comes to uk oh let's go to almighty usa so in the usa natural disasters like they don't joke i mean everything about the usa is huge so when it's happening there it has to happen huge the last last one as at um, as the time i'm doing this video for instance California experienced an extreme drought to extreme flooding and guys you sh when you look at the pictures like when you look at the videos it's very dangerous like they are sinking roads they are li it's lifting the flooding is lifting houses lifting cars like everything is afloat it, it's it's just it's too strange and scary so imagine if if you are living in this kind of area like one that I saw, it approved a, a whole tree. Hey! They had a they had a serious snowstorm where um
this six so basically what is behind the story is um, the teacher failed the the pupil in a test or something and then he went to the teacher and said to change the score and the teacher explained to him that you can't change the score you failed like this and this and that is why you feel and he insisted the score was changed and they said no he went home came back the next day like you've been thinking about it and because he's very young um, he he's not being charged I mean but his parents are charged for irresponsibility for the child to even know what the gun is to be to have access to the gun but come to think of it in this case let's say they were attacked at home and the child knew what the gun was so brought the, the gun out and shot at the robber I mean everybody would have applauded the child right but how it went is what we're talking about the luckily the teacher is not dead she is in intensive care unit at the moment but it is just something else and we hear about instances where people will just take a rifle go to um, a shop like Target or Walmart and just be shooting everybody because they have so you have an issue some people even drive around with their guns in their car they go to programs with their guns in their pockets and as soon as there an issue escalates that they just bring their guns out and be shooting people we've heard of those popular celebrities who've been shot so it's it's it's, it's very um it's an issue that we have to i mean i think they're trying to talk about but this is not when it comes to the gun violence in america you can't compare that with um, uk let's look at it this way the size and the number of people in the whole of england can be equal to or a little closer to one state in america right so if you are comparing crime rates and gun violence and all that that happens in england to the whole of america is is very um disproportionate like because the size of england and the size of the people in it if we are comparing it we should compare it to a state so let's say we are comparing the whole of england to the whole of georgia it's it's that's because sometimes looking at the surface area and the number of people in it that's what um that's the level so you can we can't compare so whatever is happening in uk the 50 times of whatever is happening in uk is what we have to look so if let's say uk is as big as the united states obviously the rates the crime rates and everything would have been high like in in america so comparing it that way makes it a bit unfair so if we are comparing crime rates i think the best will be to take a state in um the in the united states and compare it with england because size wise the number of people in 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 it twice that is the best comparison to make so in all things to be safe and everything i think what you have to do is look into the states that have low crime rates look into cities that have low crime rates and then live in that and pray there are people who have lived in america for years they've not had them inst instances or encounters and where you have police brutality coming in and all those things it's it's something that um, i think america um they will need to stand up for it but it still comes down to the fact that it's a huge i mean 50 states like 50 england's it's what we're talking about so imagine if we had 50 england's to deal with under the uk we would definitely be hearing of issues run rates each and every day so that is a comparison um, when it comes to the crime rate but with this i'm going to go for i'm, I'm going to vote for um uk especially because they don't um there is nothing like owning a gun or legalizing that so i would go for uk and i think uk wins in this um so this is the little comparison i can make when it comes to uh, the uk and the us um I've, i'm not in the usa but this is what i have heard so when i finally get to the um, us and i experience it i'll come back and give you an update 
and tell you if all that I heard were true and what um, wasn't true. Until we meet again, guys, please comment, like, and share. And please subscribe to this channel for me and let's support this journey. See you. Bye. Thank you.